Um, according to the American Standard Dictionary, the word goodness is passed down from the word good. It means uh, the state or ability to one to be good. Let me rephrase that. The state of mind, excuse me, or the attribute of being good. In other words, if you have goodness, you have the ability to do something good. If somebody was to give me a PSN card or somebody was to give you a PSN card, then evidently you was on their heart, which is their mind, according to the scriptures. Heart means mind in the Bible. When you see the word heart in the Bible, remember he's talking about the mind for some of you future Bible scholars. So whatever you want to do something for somebody, it comes from your heart or your mind. If I say, hey, Sister Sugar, I'm going to give you a PSN card next week because the Lord put on my heart to bless you. That doesn't mean God is forcing me to do it. That just means God gave me the mind, but the goodness was in my heart, and I wanted to bless you. If somebody says, Pastor Connor, your birthday is next week. I'm going to give you something from the Lockwood machine. Then that means at that point they are being good. That's the goodness that they're progressing. So all of us, the ability to be good, that's the good part. But it's the devil's job to keep us from being good by putting events and problems in our life to wash it out. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing up in here. Let me say that again. Everybody in here, even the most evilest person in the world, have the ability to be good. But it's the devil's job, Satan, to put events and problems in our life to force us not to do good. See, remember, evilness comes from your flesh is what you do. But the Bible says you are already good in your spirit. That's part of the fruits of the spirit. How do I know this? Because you was first a spirit before you was a human. If you think I'm lying, read Genesis chapter 3. The Bible says God breathed the breath of life into his nostrils. That means we came from God first, and then we mold with flesh. Hallelujah. You are already good. You already have the power to do positive things in this life. But it's your flesh that's going to cause you to do evil because somebody hurt your family, somebody hurt you, a natural reaction, you don't want to hurt them back. That's a human reaction. It's in your fallen nature. All of us can do evil. It doesn't matter how saved you are. It doesn't matter how much you talk about God. As long as you're in your flesh, you can easily backslide. That's the word of God. We're being saved. That's why we can't judge each other. You have not already arrived until the Lord says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Real talk. We are beings, all of us. Paul said it this way. I can teach to you perfect things. And I myself can be going to hell. That's what Paul said. Same thing with me. I can preach to you as Pastor Shekinah, get all of you saved. And I myself can go to hell. God has no respect to person. What he do for one person, he'll do the same thing for you. That's why I don't believe in the Pope. The Pope is nothing but a bunch of gibberish. That's make-believe. God never said it. The Bible says, call no man father but the one above. But we sit up there and call Father, no, no. If you call me father, that's okay, but I'm not your father. God in heaven is your father. I'm just a lonely servant like everybody else. But it's my job as a minister to lead you to God. Put it to you, Put it to you this way. If you guys were a sports team, see me as being your coach. See uh, God being uh, the NBA president, if you will. He's over everybody, the coach, the players. He signs the paycheck. That's who God is. I'm just the coach. You guys is the team. I may be over you when it comes to leading you to God and to make sure that you guys are okay by praying for you. I'm not over you. God is over everybody here and all of us. He is the, he is the leader. I'm just the one 
to make sure that you guys is doing what you need to do, that you need prayer, the watchman for your soul, that type, type of stuff. Me and Alicio is trying to get people to go to church and encourage you on PlayStation Home. That's all we're really here. You do things, I can't judge you. God is the one that's judging you. When you cut that PlayStation button off, I ain't got cameras in your house. You can fool me. I can fool you. But at the end of the day, none of us cannot fool God. So we're talking about goodness today. Let me explain to you why you shouldn't be depressed. Let me explain to you why. Let me explain to you why. Um, none of us shouldn't really be in a bad state of mind. Wait, give me one second. Um, Alicia is recording. So uh, I believe since the Sapphire already have a promo, I'm not sure. Um, hold on, let me check and see. I don't know. Um, if anybody have a promo, could you please invite Sister Sapphire's visitor? I don't know who all has a promo um, because I'm recording and I don't want to stop the recording. Please, if anybody can help Sister Sapphire 42, I really would appreciate it. Please PM her so she can invite more guests. So we're going to first come out of Romans 8.28. I got her. I had her, I had her on my friends list. I'm sorry. Amen. So we're first going to come out of Romans 8.28. That for those who love God, all things work together for the good for those who are called according to his purpose. That's our focus thought. Everybody in here, including myself, should be dead. All of us. One point in life, we've all done something that we probably should be dead for. But God is so good to us. The Bible says his goodness and his mercy endureth forever. You don't really understand how important that is. We as human beings can do some cruel things. Cruel things. There's a guy who I watch on YouTube, and all he talk about is how much violence we do, especially in the African-American race, killing each other over foolishness. Humans, in fact, if you watch the movie Legion, um, if y'all saw that movie, it's a great film. The man who played Michael in the film, he made a comment to one of the characters in the movie. He said, from heaven, I watched you people do some, some of the most cruel things to each other. Burning babies alive, doing all type of sexual immorality, worshiping idols and doing all these things that should have us destroyed. God even got tired of it at one point. Uh, when he flooded the whole earth with water. And only ones that got saved was Moses, his wife, his three daughters, and his three sons. Jesus even said, next time when I come back, I'm going to destroy us with fire. God is tired, y'all. We won't come to church. We won't pray and ask God to forgive us. We won't ask people to forgive us. But we expect good things to happen. It really don't work that way. As much as we want it to work, it don't because if it worked that way, then pride would begin to intervene. You can't have pride and goodness at the same time. Let me continue. Psalms 31 and 19. Oh, how abundant is your goodness. This is David writing to God have stored up for those who fear you and work for those who take refuge in you. Eight of the children of mankind. See, listen, David at that time was king. You don't understand, but when you are king, you're supposed to show leadership and you represent God. David was anointed as a young man. He had everything. He had wives, more than one. He had the army. He had the Ark of the Covenant. 
He had money. He had a kingdom. All right, brother Leo Bobo, you you take uh, care. But David messed up. He committed adultery, had the wife's husband murdered, and then lied about it. Swear that he didn't do it to a priest. He deserved to be punished. But you know what happened? God did punish him. But God's goodness, hallelujah, said, you know what? I know how much you love me, David. See, that's funny about God. Listen to me, y'all. When you truly, truly love God, if you read in this scripture, if you truly try to do all the good that you can to people, when you need help, God will be there for you. How many of us have done so much good in our life, tried to help people, tried to give back? And at the time when we need a blessing and nobody was there, it's like a miracle just happened. If you haven't experienced that, it will. That's why I always say, just do all the good you can. I know it's hard because we're in this evil flesh. This flesh don't want you to do good. This flesh don't want you to do good. I'm telling you. You can tell yourself all day long, I'm going to do good. But deep down, you know that thorn in your flesh ain't going to want you to do good. It's a natural reaction because we all was born in what? We all was born in sin. It's what? Something that is against God. This flesh is going to always try to rebel against God. Always. War between yourself. You are your worst enemy. The thing that we always do is blame other people, which is the worst thing you can ever do. You have to first change yourself. It comes with self-discipline. Let's learn to change ourselves. You can meditate all you want to. You can uh, pray all you want to. You can do jumping jacks, karate, yoga, whatever you want to. But until you get in your mind or your heart that I'm first going to change me, things will never change around you. Listen to me. Please, goodness is already in you. But the reason why we're not getting blessed is because we're not willing to change when God whoop us. The Bible says those who God loves, he chastens, meaning that he punishes you in life to correct you. God is not trying to beef with you, make you not come to church. He's trying to will you in by letting the devil spank you a little bit. But the worst thing you can ever do is run from God when you should run to God. How many of us in our right mind would run from home because we got a whooping from our parents from getting a bad grade? No, you wouldn't. If you would, then some wrong. You know when your parents whoop you for getting a bad grade, you know they don't hate you. You know darn well they're whooping you because they love you and they want you to do better, and you was wrong. got to stop blaming God. God should have, you know what? The Bible says that sometimes we could be like stubborn mules. You, you ever seen a stubborn dog? Where you try to get that dog to do something and he got his legs trying to push against you. You have to yank him by his neck on a leash. <laughs> we can get like that at times. We can be stubborn. Hallelujah. Sometimes God got to put a gun to our head and say, hey, wake up and smell the coffee. Don't you know ain't nothing good going to happen to you if you keep doing it this way? You're going to keep getting it. But if you don't like what you're getting, change. It's not going to cost you anything to change your life around. Give your life to God. Let your family see you as an example. Don't worry about popularity. You're going to get popularity actually being saved than you would if you wasn't saved. How do I know this? Proverbs chapter 4 says, give your life to God. God will give you favor with him and man. God will make your enemies your footstool. I know. I know this for a fact, homie, on PlayStation Home. When they tried to crash this church, those same members came back the next year and joined. Ain't nobody go ever break past the Shekinah because I know what I believe and what I represent. It's real easy to tear down what you didn't build, but it takes a true person, disciplined person, to build something up. We take all this time building up parties and building up fams, but we won't take time to help build up a church, 
a positive place to help give back, to encourage. Remember, goodness comes from within. Can't nobody make you do good. Goodness is already in you. You just have to bring it out. So David understood that. Here's another one, Psalms 23 and 6. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Did you see that? That's a famous scripture. Goodness and mercy. But again, the devil's job, Hebrews chapter 10, is to speak to your mind. You ever saw one of those cartoons? Like Tom and Jerry is one of my favorites. If y'all ever saw a, a Tom and Jerry cartoon or any cartoon where on the left shoulder he got the devil version of himself and on the right shoulder he got the angel version of himself? Even cartoonists knows the difference between your conscience. Everybody got a good and evil conscience. This is where they get the um, mental disease from called schizophrenic, where a person uh, in their uh their make in their amygdala, the small part of their brain is like two little circle bubbles in the lower mid part of their brain. It's called the amygdala, close to the back, where the chemical chemical imbalance is off. Basically, it's kind of a form of that, where a person has no control and they hear voices and stuff like that. It's a very, very, very sad and dangerous and scary place to be. But what I'm saying is. We don't learn how to meditate. We don't learn how to pray and believe God's word and bring good things in our life. You're going to bring curses upon yourself. I know because it happened to me. Stuff that I preach, I've been through this. This is why I can tell you. I just didn't start preaching on PlayStation Home. I've been a minister before I PlayStation Home even was existent. I've been preaching the same thing. I know what I'm saying. Bring curses on your life. You can tear everything around you. People will get away from you all because you're not being good. Remember, if everybody around you is saying something around, is saying something about you, it's not everybody else. It's you. The Bible says everybody is right in their own eyes. Everybody is right, think they're right in their own eyes. That's a bad place to be. Saying it don't matter what they think. It does. How you expect to win somebody's soul if you sit up there acting like you all that and a bag of chips and they expect for them to kiss you in your butt? Nobody shouldn't kiss anybody in their butt. The Bible says if you want friends, you got to show yourself friendly. They shouldn't have to be friendly to you for you to be their friend. If you want to be popular, you got to humble yourself and be friendly. If you want to be a fan boss, if you want to do something positive on home, you got to be the most humblest. This is why I'm always giving honor to every last one of you. Y'all don't have to give me honor because I don't want it. That's what keeps me humble. Because at the end of the day, I know who I am. And I know that I want to worship God and I want to be real. I don't come on home to play Barbie. If I come on home to play a Barbie doll, I'd rather go to my 14-year-old daughter and buy some real Barbies. I'm not going to come on here and be Pastor Shekinah. I'm going to come on here and be myself preaching through you through this avatar because I'm trying to save people. People are dying like left and right, and we up here still playing Barbies, all at the playground, all at the bowling alley. Don't want to have come to church, but when something happens, we want to have a pity party. And the first person we blame is who? God. And I'm not talking about nobody here, so don't get upset. But if this word is getting to you, then it must be for you. I'm just keeping it 100. And if you can't take the heat, stay out of the kitchen. I ain't got time for games. I'm too old to be playing Barbies. I'm pushing 33 years old if God says the same. I have teenagers for children. I'm trying to save people's lives, and I'm trying to save my own. And the worst thing to do is to run folks away. We run people away by not being good. You wonder why that man don't love you no more. You wonder why that woman don't love you no more. It's because it's not them, it's you. We have to first look within ourselves. This is why the Bible says, judge you not, or you shall be judged. Matthew, Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 through 4. Judging everybody else. Look at yourself. If they work hard and put money in their avatar, then give them a compliment. The Bible says, bless with your words, not curse. Then you wonder why you got so many haters. 
Talk about I love my haters. That's a stupid, whoever made that phrase should be in trouble. Because that's not coincides to the scripture. When saying I love my haters is actually being sarcastic. It says pray for them who misplightfully misused you without a cause. Saying I love my haters means you bragging on yourself because you know they go hate on you. There's no glory in that phrase. Do it trying to be cute. But at the end of the day, they go learn a hard way. I'm telling you. God is not mocked. Psalms 145, 15 through 19. I'm almost done, y'all. I, I won't be able to finish because we started late. Of all their food in due season. You open your hand. You satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and kind in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call him in truth. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him and also fears their cry. I'm sorry, also hears their cry and saves them. Let me break this. Uh, I'm going to stop at this scripture, but let me break it down. I of all look to you. He's talking about the world, us. We look to the Lord. All of us look to the Lord for something. He said, all the eyes of the world look to you. So David acknowledged God by saying, look, we all look to you for help. And you give them their food in due season. That means God created vegetables and plants and meat. If God didn't give the resources, we would starve to death. You know, there's people right now in their right mind is actually saying God don't give us food. We make food ourselves and blah, blah, blah. They actually are bold enough to say that. But guess what? If God put a terrible freeze on all the crop, we will be fighting and killing each other over food. It happened before. If you look at World War II and World War I, if you look at the Great Depression, if you look at the Y2K back in 2000, when we thought the computers was going to stop, everybody, even me, <laughs> was trying to get gas, thinking the world was going to come to an end. So don't you sit up here and tell me that. Don't you sit up here and tell me that we don't fear God, at least to the point that this world is going to end. We play these little childish games. But real talk, we all know something's going to happen. Inside, we know something big is going to happen, all of us. No matter how young you are, how old you are, we all know some way or another, God is in control of something or something big is going to happen. They tell you all on the news, it was not normal what we had last week. 35 below freezing weather across the whole United States. In my 33 years of life, that have never happened. I've never lived to be 33 below unless you live in Alaska, but that's not normal for this country. But tell us something. He really is, but we sit up here, we just don't care. The truck don't come in. When I went to the store, people was, I mean, think about it. People was all at the grocery store trying their best to get food. I even went to the grocery store. Make sure that my white heads had everything that they need. But I'm just showing you that we acknowledge the fact that God do provide food for us. He keeps the sun shining. He keeps open your hand. That means God brings blessings upon you. If God wants to, he can kill us there right now by stopping our heart. Did you know you don't make your heart beat? make your heart stop unless you take medicine and suicide yourself your heart beats automatically if it doesn't they will give you something called a pacemaker which continues to make heaven if your heart if you control your heart to beat you technically will die your heart is muscle all you need is just one cramp in your heart and you dead all you need is one blood clot one artery clogged up that's a wrap for you.
your whole existence will be gone. But we don't think about stuff like that. We don't think about every day we live, we get closer to our funeral. We don't, we blot it out because we feel like, well, I crossed that bridge when I get to it. But who told you that you will be here? God says, take no thought for tomorrow. Now, I'm preaching this to myself because pastors should kind of have a hard time with this. Sometimes I have a problem of planning stuff ahead. So I admit that's my shortcoming. I have a bad problem of planning stuff two or three months ahead. I need to stop that. And then I worry about it. The Bible says, take no thought. You don't even know you're going to be here tomorrow. I'm in law enforcement in my other life. I can get hit with a bullet doing what I do and leave my a family behind. But that's how we think sometimes. We don't pray under. We plan things even on PlayStation Home. Girl, I'm getting married on home uh, a couple of months. Who told you you're going to be here? Who told you you go live to see your wedding? We make these vows and we do all these things as if ain't nothing going to happen to me because we young. I got friends back in GI, Murder Capital, where I'm from, who died back in the Tupac Biggie Smalls area. Got shot down, 15, 16 years old, who wished they could live to be in their 30s. I got friends right now sleeping in the grave because they didn't do it God's way. They wasn't blessed like me to have a grandmother raise them up in church. They gone, dead. Never to see 2014 violence. But if it wasn't for God having his hand on your life, we would all be dead. So this was David was trying to say that, look, even you, your hand on our life still makes you good. So even your worst depression day, God is still good. Your man could have just divorced you, or your wife could have just dumped you. You could have just got fired off your job. You could have just got kicked out your fam on PlayStation Home. Even people, people love home so much, even this virtual world. Uh, uh, even this virtual world can make a person have a bad life. People can get so deep on PlayStation Home that even this, can mess up their life. But God is still faithful and just and good to you that even in a virtual world, God still got ways to provide where you can be uh, blessed and feel good, which is the church and positive people even on PlayStation Home. He says, so you open your hand, you satisfy the desires of every living thing. See, he satisfies us. And then he says, the Lord is righteous in all his ways, not some, in all, even if a baby dies, sister fellowship. If you have a child and the baby was to die, believe it or not, that baby goes back to God. Your sins ain't on you until after the age of 12. That's found in Exodus and Deuteronomy, according to the Jewish law. Because when you're 12 years old and older, then that means you know what you are doing is wrong. Children does not go to hell because their sins is on their parents. But if you're 12 years old and older, your sins is on you. And everything you do, and if you die, that is not pleasing to God, the Bible says you're going to be judged by a Revelation 19. So if you was a child and you was to pass away, you're going back to be with the Lord. And it's not a bad thing. Stop blaming God for that too. Oh, I'm turning my life on God because a three-year-old child got shot down. Well, guess what? The Bible says how precious it is to see the death of one of his little ones. That's not a bad thing. As funny as it sounds, me saying this is not really a bad thing. Technically, I can't wait till I die and be with the Lord. I'm tired of this life because this life means nothing. You have problems, bills, you get fired, drama, all this unnecessarily crap. There is nothing more precious than being in glory with the Lord. I'm, I, really? Who wants to be around people that say their loved ones die with cancer? Who wants to constantly go through fights and debates and depression? Who want to really go through that? Really? People want to stay on this earth. Good luck. The Bible says the devil is the prince of this world. I want to be with Jesus. I really do. I'm so tired now. It's foolish and it's ridiculous. People killing over PlayStation 4s and murdering over Xbox Ones. That's stupid to me. When are we going to grow up and say, look, let's just stop the violence and let's just come together in unit. But we won't do it. This is why God has to come back. The Bible says that God don't shorten his coming, no flesh would be saved.
Oh, I wish, like I said this two weeks ago, that I would see two big fams on PlayStation Home come together and just kick it. I've never seen that ever. It's my three years on PlayStation Home. I've never seen it. Because we won't do it. We won't do it. We get so wrapped up and think it's real. And then he says, the Lord is near to all those or all who, who call upon him. If you call upon the Lord, God promised to have your back. God will be there quicker than any human being, than your homie, anybody. Because at the end of the day, when your time is up, if God say, okay, your time is up. Remember, I'm about to close with this, but remember Hezekiah? He was one of the kings of Jerusalem. When Hezekiah was getting ready to die, and he was a young man, he had everything. But he did something that made God not happy, the Bible said. The prophet came to him and said, Hezekiah, God is ready to call you home because you was not doing what, what thus said the Lord. You know what Hezekiah did? He didn't get heated. He didn't start making fun. He didn't start judging or getting all upset like King Saul did. You know what he did? He fell to his knees. He didn't go to his mama like most of us do. He didn't go to his He didn't go to the club. He didn't go smoke a pound of weed. He didn't do any of that crap. You know what he did? Because he understood that Jesus is the source of my life. And any time God says it's time to go, you getting up out of here. I don't care how good you look, how pretty you are, how much money you get, homie. When you about to get up out of here, when God says it's time to call you home, you leaving in your Jordans, your Samoans, your, your Timberlands, your baby fat, you getting up out of here. But we don't think that way. We think, oh, I keep myself here, but you don't. This is God's world. This is God's body. This is God's life that you're breathing. And anytime he wants to, snap us all away. I could be preaching to you. And I can fall down myself if God wanted to. But Hezekiah, he understood that. He understood the mind of God and how good God is. He understood God can change his mind. You know what he did? He fell to his knees and begged God for mercy. He didn't get proudful and say, God, why are you killing me? He didn't get mad at God like most of us do. He fell to his knees and said, God, only against, hallelujah, only against you have I sinned. Only against you, hallelujah, have I offended. Not against no human. <laughs> Not against no human because they don't control my life. Only against you have I sinned. I recognize that you are my father. You can give me a thousand years. Man, God is so powerful. He will let you live a thousand years if you want to. But we don't think that way. We put God in this little box. Don't you know God made the sun? Come on now. The sun is so hot. They say if, we, if the earth moved 10 miles closer, we will burn to death. And if we move 10 miles further, we will freeze to death. You can't tell me God ain't good. How the earth is in a perfect shape of alignment with the sun? Real talk. And God is your father too? Come on now. We got to stop thinking God is this little weakling. No, God has all, all power. You should be proud to call God your, your daddy, your father. The Bible says we all have one father. But if you recognize that, then that shall make you be happy, joyful, not depressed and sad. Human beings make, make being your God, make you feel like you weak. No. No, only against God have you sinned against. You don't owe nobody nothing. But you owe God everything. Hallelujah. Hezekiah recognized that. He said, Lord, only against you have I sinned. Please spare my life. Give me another chance. And you know what? The Bible says the prophet came back and told Hezekiah, God heard your prayer. And you was humble when you prayed. And God gave you twice as many years of, of, of your life. From Mary, when Mary and Martha, Lazarus' brother, when they heard that Lazarus died, they wept and crying to Jesus. Lord, Lord, our brother has died. Why didn't you come no time sooner? You know what Jesus told them? He said, the reason why I didn't come sooner, because I'm not crying for him. I'm crying for you all, because you have no faith in me. You see that? Jesus is God manifesting the flesh. And Jesus said the same thing that God said. He said, you have no faith in me. Don't you know I can do all things? You can go to YouTube right now if you think I'm lying. Type up this thing called the Lazarus Phenomenon. 
Again, the Lazarus phenomenon is on YouTube. This true story about this African from Kenya. He actually died for three days. It's on video. And he explained what he saw. And his wife had so much faith, she told the man not to embalm him. Because she believed Hebrews 11 about faith, how when a wife prayed for her husband or vice versa, because marriage is honorable, he came back to life. Because if he would have died, he, he was going to go to hell, a minister. Because before he had that car accident, he offended his wife and didn't want to forgive her. And remember, the Bible says if you don't forgive your person on earth, God cannot forgive you. So all you men that got haters and all you people on home that have enemies, you better learn how to forgive them. You better learn how to squash it and let that beef go. I'm telling you, because if you die with that beef in your heart, you might as well make your bed somewhere else because you cannot be in heaven. Because all of heaven is full of forgiveness and love and joy. If you don't have forgiveness, love, and joy, now you don't have to talk to them. You, you can get away from them, but you still got to forgive them. Because if God can forgive you in your mess, you don't have a right to hold accountable for nobody else in their mess. If God can forgive you for cheating on somebody, why can't you forgive them if they have wronged you? If God has forgiven you for, uh, for fighting somebody, then why can't you forgive them? Let's let the pride go. Let's show our goodness. So that God even understands that, look, I'm good. But if you don't believe that I'm good, the Bible says those who come to God most first believe that he is God. And he is a rewarder of them that desperately seek him. God will give you the desires of your heart. But if you play Barbies with God, which means pretending, then God won't be because he won't play Barbies with you. God is real, and he wants you to be real. If you come short, just tell him. Say, Lord, I want to be saved, but I'm not ready. Just tell him. He already know your heart. Say, Lord, I want to come to you and be a born-again believer, but I'm just struggling. Lord, I want to do better. Lord, I have an anger problem. Lord, I have a lust problem. Lord, I have a gluttony problem. Lord, I have a prideful problem. Whatever you are going through, Get it out. The Bible says confess your faults to one another that you may heal one another. Like I told you last week, you don't have not one friend on planet Earth who you can talk to something is wrong. Everybody in here should have at least one person who they can talk to, at least one. You should be able to have at least one person who you can talk to. So the Bible says, confess your fault. If you have a problem, go to your homie. It ain't got to be no pastor or no minister. If you have a best friend or, or if you have a female friend or somebody you hang out with, talk to them. Confess it. Say, you know what, girl, I'm going through this problem with my man or, or whatever. I need your help. What shall I do? Whatever. You know, I mean, if you can trust her. Now, preferably, I prefer... You go to somebody who's a minister or a pastor or somebody you can trust from a spiritual standpoint. They can pray for you. But still, find somebody who you can trust. Talk with them. Say, hey, look, I have a problem. Because unless you get that thing confessed, it, that thing in you going to eat you alive. You don't want to play around with sin. Sin can hurt you mentally, physically, and emotionally. And then he says, he fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He also hears the cry and saves them. You hear that? Now, it's the difference between fearing and scaring. When you are fearful of something, that means you respect it. Fear is not being scared, okay? If you fear God, then respect him. When you're a child, you fear your parents because you respect them. You know they're going to whoop you. But God doesn't want you to be scared of him. When you're scared of something, you run from it. You get it? So don't use that word incorrectly. Just look it up in the dictionary. Fear and scared is two different things. If you're fearful of something, again, you respect it. But if you're scared of something, you run from it. It's a difference. 
You will never find scared of God in the Bible. But you will always find the fear of the Lord. They feared the Lord, the fear of the angel, because they respected him. They dropped to their knees in fear of respect, the Bible says. So God doesn't want you to be scared of him. He wants you to fear him because if you fear him, you will respect him. Scared of is the devil. The devil ain't no joke, playboy. He no joke. The devil brought down pharaohs and kings before any of us was born. The devil is the prince of this air. The devil is a dangerous something. You don't have the power to fight the devil. You don't have the power to stumble on the devil's head. Find out in the scripture. The Bible says you fight the devil by resisting him. You fight the devil by resisting him. He cannot take you by force. He got to get God's permission. Job 30, uh, of Job chapter 3, excuse me. But God got your back today. I wish I could finish this, but I ain't got time to finish. We have another service. I'll catch up on the tonight. Just remember, God, if you don't remember anything that I said today, remember that Jesus Christ really loves you. I don't care what happened in your life. I don't care what you're going through in your life. I don't care. As long as the blood is running warm in your body, God is good to you. In fact, he spoiled Americans even more. Because think about it this way. Let me give you a little bit of wisdom. If we was a spirit before we became a human, that means that God have chosen you to be in this country. So wouldn't it be to be an American? Think about it and have the ability to see a virtual world where there's people in the country of Somalia in the 1992 cell phones who ain't even still seen a PlayStation 2. I mean, really think about it. You are blessed. We are really, really spoiled. We can eat McDonald's, Burger King, eat at the Olive Garden. You can go see 3D films. It's people in different parts of the world ain't never even heard of 3D. Are you kidding me? And we sit up here want to complain. Babies. 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 That's what we are. We're babies. The Bible says, as babes in Christ, read your Bible, desire the sensual milk of the word. You can tell a, a, a person who's a baby saint because we complain about the littlest thing. The littlest thing ain't giving God praise for nothing. If little kids born with cancer, born have to have the uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation. And here we are with our health and strength on a video game, arguing at grown folks because they ain't in our fam. We should be ashamed of ourselves. But we don't see it that way. Why? Because we babies. Babies. But get mad at the pastor and leave the church when we say this. Well, don't get mad at me. You should be mad at yourself because God is still good. Hallelujah. God feel good. He, even as part of our goofiness and our ridiculousness, God is still good. All the time. That's right, brother. And all the time, God is still good. I'm not saying I'm exempt. I've been a baby many times, too. I've caught myself arguing on PlayStation Home with some of these grown folks. But I had to yet go back and apologize, get on my knees and say, Lord, help me. Forgive me. Because any time I let someone in this game, they're not even real. Make me upset. That means I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I got to stop judging everybody else. I got to I gotta judge me. Babies is we look at everybody else. So be encouraging God. Show goodness and mercy. You can go ahead and stop the recording, BFF. I'm, I'm about to get ready to close.